Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Geomatics Engineering and as I said in my last lecture that we are going to start a new series of Geoinformatics where I will cover the whole syllabus that falls within the Geoinformatics and the syllabus that I am going to follow is from IGNU PGDGI. So today is going to be its first lecture that is introduction to Geoinformatics. So basically uh, in this lecture we are going to cover about the Geoinformatics definition, what are the various components of Geoinformatics, the basic terminologies that are related to Geoinformatics, list type of Geoinformatic product and about the open source geospatial consortium and also we will learn about the scope and applications of Geoinformatics. So starting from the defined Geoinformatics, so what we understood from this term Geoinformatics, so basically Geoinformatics is a combination of different disciplines like geology, geodesy, cartography, GIS, geography, GPS, photogrammetry, computer science, remote sensing. Geoinformatics is a combination of all these domains and if we go through the proper definition of geoinformatics according to different sources like Wikipedia says that Geoinformatics is science and technology which develops and uses information science infrastructure to address the problems of geography geoscience and related branches of science and engineering. So according to Wikipedia, Geoinformatics develops technology and solutions for the problems which are originated from geography, geosciences and other related branches. And in 2001, according to Chachinsky, Geoinformatics is the science of the gathering, processing and dissemination of information which is spatially defined within the earth system. So according to this, we spread the information that is related to the earth system spatial information. And in 2004, according to Aldeski describes the geoinformatics like it is the science and the technology that deals with the structure and character of spatial information. Basically, we talks about the location and its capture, its classification, its storage, processing, portrayal and dissemination, including the infrastructure necessary to secure optimal use of the information or it is the art, science and technology that deals with the acquisition, storage, processing, production, presentation and dissemination. So if we summarize this like any information that is related to all spatial data, so basically we collect that information, store that information, produce a different kind of result from that information that is basically called geoinformatics. And the geoinformatics as we read about it definition and also if we split this terms into two parts like this is made up of geo and informatics. So geo means meaning earth and informatics means a broad field that is related to computer and information science. So information about earth is called geoinformatics. If we talk about some real time examples of geoinformatics like on daily basis we use this any food delivery application like Zomato and C Swiggy you order food and the delivery partner reaches exactly at your place that is with the help of geoinformatics. If you book a taxi from Ola and Uber the driver reaches to your point correctly and drops you at the location where you wanted to go that is also possible with the help of geoinformatics. In the field of telecom geoinformatics is used for finding a suitable place for placing mobile towers geoinformatics is also used for site selections in power sectors across decision support tool for locating electrical assets their geoinformatics is also used to reduce transmission loss and reduce electrical theft through consumer mapping and also the Aroge Setu app that is used for COVID cases mapping is also done with the help of geoinformatics. Next we will talk about the various components of geoinformatics. So as we said that geoinformatics is a mixture of different domains. So basically the components of it are computer science, geodesy, cartography, photogrammetry, remote sensing, GNSS and GIS. And in the next slides we are going to explain about these different components that what are these and how these are helpful in geoinformatics. So if we talk about the computer science. So if you know about the computer science you can develop applications that can be useful for GIS applications. Computer science is used for data management purpose where you can handle a vast size of data and complex data across different fields. With the use of computer science, you can develop hardwares and softwares for efficient data processing. With the help of computer science advancement, you can enhance activities and research globally. And in geoinformatics, with the help of 
computer science you can do the data acquisition part processing part product generation parts visualization and dissemination in different kind of ji software that is made up of using the computer science technology and also utilizing computer science streamline this data acquisition processing and dissemination in various fields can be done next component is geodesy so geodesy is like a gps for the earth where we talk about the earth's shapes gravity field and rotation like a geodesy is an art and science where we can accurately map the earth surface and it changes over time like we study the features like any mountain ocean and continent if it is shifting from one place to another place what changes are occurring over the time we can map it through the geodesy so geodesy basically use the applications of gravimetry which is used to determine the earth's gravity and position astronomy to locate the points accurately geodesy helps represent the earth accurately on the maps like uh, earlier i said that it is gps of the earth so basically it helps us to locate the positions on any map and if we go into the deep down of geodesy we will talk about the datums map projections and coordinate systems that all are also included in geodesy then next we will talk about this component that is cartography so cartography is basically the art of map making it is like a language that helps us to communicate about the earth surface like earlier when there was not a, any google map then cartography was dominant there where people uses maps in hard copies for going from one place to another place and that art of map making is called as cartography so cartography is basically used for map creation data visualization communication purpose and it also represent the accuracy and then the next component is photogrammetry so photogrammetry as in the name of it the photo term is included so from this we can know that we will talk about photographs that are clipped from a camera so photogrammetry is the earliest remote sensing technology that extracts geometric properties from any photographic images that are captured by a camera and with the use of this photos you can measure objects positions and shapes and this is also said by the american society for photogrammetry and remote sensing they also says that with the use of photogrammetry images we can obtain information about objects and the environment through images recording measuring and interpretation and one cons about an aerial photograph is like they have distortions and they do not provide geometric accuracy without correction first you have to correct these images then they will provide accuracy you can use the aerial photographs for valuable studying about the earth environment but first you have to accurate the images adjust the images accordingly to get the correct result and if we talk about the some history of photogrammetry so in the late 1800s aerial photogrammet photography begins with the cameras that were mounted on balloons kites and airplanes as you can see in this images that earlier camera used to mounted on birds kites or in balloons to click the picture of earth surface and this technology uh, revolutionized during the world war 1 to gather the intelligence on enemy to movements and post war civilian use of aerial photographic photography expanded in the areas like north america and europe and then further the aerial photographs are used for different applications like to create topographic and reference map of natural and human made features and now it is used for different applications like topography mapping architecture engineering manufacturing quality control police investigation and geology archaeologist also uses this aerial photography technology to map large and complex sites while meteorologist also use this data to estimate tornado wind speed and where the weather data is limited aerial photography is used there also in movie production the aerial photography is also used to combine the live action with computer generated imagery for realistic effect and then the our next component is remote sensing the important component so remote sensing basically is used to collect the data without touching the object like a satellites collect the information about the earth without touching the earth so it collects the data from a remote that's why it is called as remote sensing so basically it collects the information from electromagnetic radiation that is reflected or emitted from earth surface that data is captured within the satellites and from that we get the information about earth surface so remote sensing can be active and passive 
and it operates in optical or microwave spectra the different application of remote sensing includes land use agriculture forestry city planning archaeology military observation and weather forecasting laser scanning within the remote sensing is a advanced type of remote sensing which used for precision and automation advantages of remote sensing like it includes a wide area coverage we we get information of any place on repetition basis all weather capability it has and it can access to the inaccessible areas on the earth surface then our next component is gnss global navigation satellite system so gnss consists of satellite orbiting earth every 12 hour at approximately 20200 km altitude so as in the name of gnss that navigation so it helps us to get the precise timing location and velocity with various devices worldwide GS, gnss technology comprises of space control and user segment that allows us for precise earth surface positioning and with the help of gnss application we can determine any location navigation track map and timing synchronization so basically location based services utilizes gnss data to offer location aware information that is primarily used in emergency services navigation and resource localization the gagan that full form is gps added geo augmented navigation that is a regional satellite based augmentation system by indian government that enhances navigation over indian space space and adjoining areas so basically gagan is a regional navigation system that provides only a specific reasons navigation information but uh, gnss provides a whole worldwide information for navigation like gps glonass that are examples of gnss and gagan is a regional based navigation system and our next component is gis that is geographic information system so G with the help of gis we can view analyze visualize any spatial data and reveal its patterns and relationship with other data and for using the gis application the components that are needed are computer system software spatial data and person gis is, is integration of remote sensing and gps data for data entry storage processing and analysis so basically gis is a combination of spatial and non spatial data and worldwide gis is used for different applications like urban planning natural resource management environmental assessment emergency planning transportation analysis and business planning and within the gis web gis allows dynamic map generation online while integration with gps enables in car navigation and precision farming gis also evolves into spatial decision support system that is sdss virtual gis that is vgis and expert system that is es and these are used for enhancing the decision making and simplifying complex functions so that's all about the various components next we will we will talk about the basic terminologies that are used in geoinformatics like the term geomatics so there is a another term related to geoinformatics that is geomatics so it is firstly used in canada at laval university in early 1980s and this term geomatics was first proposed in 1968 the term geomatics is also having a different kind of definition according to different peoples like geomatics industry association of canada defines geomatic as it is a technology and service sector focusing on the acquisition part storage analysis dissemination and management of geographically referred information for improved decision making so basically geomatics is a earlier version of geoinformatics and this term is commonly used in north america whereas geoinformatics appears to be more popular in europe such as in the netherland with the renowned geoinformatics department and at the ITC that is International Institute of Aerospace Survey and Earth Sciences so as i said that geomatics was the earlier version of geoinformatics and in north america they were using geomatics and in europe they were using geoinformatics so geomatics is synonym of geoinformatics but a slight difference is in its engineering orientation like geomatics is considered a science concerned with using mathematical methods on data about the earth surface and then the next term is geospatial technology so geospatial technology is relatively a newer term referring to geospatial and if we also split this term into two parts that is geo plus spatial that emphasizes on use of technology and computer based technique to get the data about earth surface and then the next term is spatial science so spatial science is a field that deals with identifying feature 
and understanding and analyzing the pattern and trend in numerical spatial data so basically it is a relationship between space and time and it is defined as a field that involves using technology to collect store manage and analyze geographical data and it is also known as geospatial information science or geoscience the another term within the geoinformatics is spatial and non spatial data so as we all know that spatial data is having a real world reference or it have information about location like coordinates so location specific information which data is having is known as spatial data and gis helps to integrate the spatial data with the non spatial data non spatial data is like attribute data and we just integrate this non spatial data with the spatial data to get more information from the spatial data like if we are having a location like taj mahal so taj mahal is located in agra we have a location of agra taj mahal and then we add more attribute information in this like taj mahal is far away like taj mahal is this much kilometer away from railway station taj mahal is situated in this much area so that other informations when we add to this data that is non spatial kind of information that is added this spatial data to get more results and information from this data the next term is big data analytics so big data analytics involves systematic extraction and analysis of complex data that offers insights into trends behaviors and patterns like within the big data analytics as in the name it is mentioned that big. so we have a large volume of data where we used to study the pattern behavior and trend mapping from that data and with the help of this study we can have a capability of faster and better decision making and just by reading the trends patterns and behavior we can get about to know that what new products and services needs to be launched so that all comes under the big data analytics the next term is spatial analysis so spatial analysis uses inbuilt spatial analytic tools to uncover hidden patterns anomalies and relationship between spatial data like we are having any spatial data and with the technique spatial analysis we can get more information from the spatial data like we do the data manipulation like extraction location identification critical analysis from that spatial data using spatial analysis spatial analysis utilize the data from various sources like satellite image gps and social platforms to visualize trends and make accurate predictions it also studies the trends for prediction so these all were the basic terminologies that were related to geoinformatics now we will talk about some geoinformatics products so their geoinformatics products are divided into two broad categories like cartographic products and non cartographic products cartographic outputs includes both hard and soft copy maps and non cartographic output includes map models like digital elevation model and information system which are used for visualization some example of cartographic products are hard copy maps and soft copy maps non cartographic products are like tabular text data thematic maps animation information system spatial decision support system dem text graphic outputs digital data hard copy output attribute table driving direction list of hospital temples etc these are non cartographic product there is also a different kind of geoinformatic product that is decision support system so it is a software based system for adding management operation and planning level of an organization like here is a example of geoinformatics product that is a multi layered display like in this image there is a before and after image of an area so first image is from 1997 and second image is from 2002 so using these two images a change map is created uses geoinformatics and within a single maps all these three layers are represented to show the change next is a thematic output with symbol it is also geoinformatics product like this is a thematic map and with the help of legend you can get to know that which color is showing what like dark green is showing the evergreen moist vegetation so just by using this legend colors you will get to know that which color is representing what kind of vegetation so these kind of maps are known as thematic map and here it is a one more example of geo informatics product like in the first image it is a shaded relief map that shows the elevation and in the second image it is a remote sensing image that draped over a dam 
like it is also showing the features available on the earth surface with including the z information also the dim data is also showed here which shows the elevation in this image one more geoinformatics product is like showing internet uses of gis so here is a website tamil nadu forest department so they also uses gis maps to represent about their forest areas and other informations also so this is one more product of geoinformatics so geoinformatics products can be represented in various format like it can include also a tabular text data thematic maps any kind of animation information system and spatial decision support system these all can be a geoinformatics product and next we will talk about a open source geospatial consortium so why this is introduced as many organization and individuals are increasingly turning to free and open source software in geoinformatics due to the high cost associated with commercial license that's why they are moving to the free and open source software so there is a website open source geospatial consortium so it is a non not for profit organization its mission is to foster global adoption of open geospatial technology by being an inclusive software foundation devoted to an open philosophy and participatory community driven development so basically it is a com community that promotes the open source software it creates free and publicly accessible geospatial standards enabling technological collaboration and managing the ogc innovation program to solve geospatial challenges so this community also conducts different types of programs where people represent their problems and solutions with the using of open source software so the main motive of this community is to promote the open geospatial technology next we will talk about some scope and applications of geoinformatics so gis has a diverse application that benefits various sectors like urban planning law enforcement business utility natural resource management disaster management defense wildlife protection and healthcare and there are many more applications that can get benefits with the use with using of geoinformatics technology like in business utility road natural resource management disaster monitoring defense strategy wildlife protection and disease surveillance so these all are the scope and applications in geoinformatics now we will talk about the summary that we learned from this lecture so firstly we learned about the basic definition of geoinformatics that is is it is union of earth sciences and informatics we also learned about the components of geoinformatics that includes computer science geodesy cartography photogrammetry remote sensing and gnss and gis next we also learned the basic definitions of components of geoinformatics like in computer science is used for data acquisition processing product generation data visualization and dissemination that depends on the computer science geodesy defines the shape and dimension of the earth through its main two branches that is gravimetry and positioning astronomy cartography deals with the conception production dissemination and study of maps it is art of map making photogrammetry is basically concerned with the making measurements about position and shape of object with the help of photographs remote sensing is to collection of data about an object from a distance gps basically broadcast signals which enables people to know precisely know about their location on the earth surface and gis integrates with hardware software and data for capturing managing analyzing and displaying all forms of geographically referenced information and now we all have understanding of earth as a complex system and its various interrelated processes and mechanism that have been made possible by the use of geoinformatics and it is useful in mapping monitoring and management of natural resources and disasters so that's all about this lecture where we get introduced with geoinformatics and its different components so i hope you all have liked this lecture and please let me know about your reviews in the comment section thank you very much